Well, before I start my presentation, I would like to, uh, to thank the Institute for Food Processing Technology, well, the Craig Richardson Institute for Food Processing Technology, especially uh, Luis, to, uh, to, to give us the opportunity to be here. And I uh, speak on behalf of the, the Dutch uh, people here. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Michaela, for the nice uh, collaboration in the last few weeks. And also, Holly, Alice, I think she's outside, but she arranged all the tickets and everything and the travel plans. Thank you uh, for that. Um, I will tell you a little bit more, as Louise indicated, about the, the first, uh, the beginning of the, the Food Valley uh, concept. Um, and uh, of course, that's already a long time ago, and it's a big story, so I will take only some fragments out of that story, <clears throat> and I hope that, uh, that that will contribute to the workshop. Um, I hope uh, we, well, please interfere as much as possible, and I will just leave the rest of my presentation if, uh, if there is nice questions, because, well, it's a workshop, and uh, we, should wor we should discuss. So please, and otherwise, I will uh, ask questions to you. Uh, I will tell about uh, some stakeholders. Uh, OSNV, of course, the development agency I am working for, uh, food companies, R&D, Wageningen University Research Center, uh, the foundation I will tell a little bit about, and I want to do that in half an hour. Um, um, and I hope we have some discussion at, at the end, uh, which is always the most interesting. Uh, if you uh, ask me a question, please use the microphone. I hear very bad, so uh, I, I need some, let's say, more voice. Uh, some information b before the story about Food Valley. Uh, here you see uh, Europe, and um, you see red areas. Red areas is the employment density. And you can see London and Paris completely red. And you can also see that the Netherlands is very red. It's very he heavily populated. Still, we are uh, uh, an agri-food country. And we can only do that if we do this very effectively. Here you see the Netherlands. You see a brown area. And you see the red area, and uh, we are active in the brown area. And if you come to the Netherlands, don't go to, into the red area. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that's the reason. Um, we are financed by uh, the Ministry of uh, Economic Affairs and two provinces. Of course, <laughs> provinces are much smaller um, than here. Um, uh, and our uh, mission is to build more economic activities. So we are not, no, we are not interested in R&D. We are not interested in innovation, but we are interested in valorization, which means how can we make money out of new products, new developments. So that is where we are after. And in our region, we have three universities. And the most beautiful one is uh, Wageningen University and Research Center. Um, and we regard that as the, the, the key element of the Food Valley cluster. It, it consists of three organizations, in fact. It's a university, fundamental research. It is a contract research organization. Applied research, commercial research, it's about the same in size. And a third is um, uh, not polytechnics, but um, how it is called? Um, um, training, training, politics. So it's, uh, it's not academic. And the three, they make uh, Wageningen University and Research Center. And as you can see, um, they, are, they have their headquarters in the middle of the country, and they have satellites 
all over the place, and even abroad we have offices. Um, it's an international university, of an, an international organization, I must say. Um, uh, it's not big, it has only 12,000 students, so Guelph University is much bigger. Um, the, the, um, the number of PhD students is relatively high, it's about 1,500. But I think Emil, you will tell a little bit more about Wageningen University and Research Center, but the, 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 the knowledge that is generated inside this organization is in fact the source of a lot of the innovations that take place in Wageningen. <clears throat> Our agri-food industry, that's including the flowers, it's the biggest uh, Dutch industry. It is uh, it has a turnover of about 15 uh, billion euros, which is about 63 billion Canadian dollars. And if I hear, hear the, 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 cluster, the food cluster in Ontario is 34, 36 billion, I think it's the same, because you have to deduct the flowers from this maybe, and then, yeah, well, you see it's more or less the same size. <coughs> Uh, also, employment, 9% of our people in the Netherlands are related to the agri and food sector. Um, our <coughs> infra uh, uh, infra knowledge infrastructure structure is, is, I think, quite good. If you see the number of publications, uh, no, sorry, this is the next, I'll go to Dick. Uh, Wageningen UR and the French INRA are uh, a number of publications are the, the biggest in, uh, in Europe. And I think that's important for your knowledge generation. Go back to this one. Uh, the the, the agri-food sector, uh, exports uh, in Europe, it's the Netherlands, it's Germany and France which are the biggest. So it is an important sector. <clears throat> now, some stories about Food Valley. Um, there were two people that started this Food Valley concept. It was uh, a colleague uh, uh, working for a foundation and me, and we, we started uh, this, this Food Valley concept. And we, we didn't know exactly where, 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 what we were heading for, but it, it moved. And as we discussed it, we could point noses in the same direction. And that slowly grow into, grew into something. Um, and I would like to tell you a little bit more about that. Um, the, it started when our province asked us to... Um, to help with a new policy more focused on high intensive or uh, high intensive activities, uh, more technical. Uh, so forget about the logistics and the touristic sector, but focus more on uh, agri-food, high tech materials. Uh, and they looked at the universities as being the, the prime source for, for this new policy. And of course, uh, educating the cows in Einstein's law is not the way you should do that. But how to do it? Well, the, uh, the question ended on my desk when I started at the development agency, and I, I also didn't know. So, well, if you don't know, then you ask other people. So, and that was, that was good. I, I, the first person I talked to was Professor Houtvast. He was a professor in the university. He was also the CEO of the so-called Wageningen Center for Food Sciences, collaboration between the industry and the academia. Um, it's now called Top Institute Food and Nutrition, and I think Kees will tell a little bit more about that, I guess. Yeah? Okay, and I asked him, uh, Professor Houtvast, what, what should we do? And then he said, well, I have two Two, two points to mention. Uh, one is, we are not an agricultural university, we are a food university, because the added value is in the food, not in the agriculture. 
there was a big discussion those days uh, how to reposition the, the, the university. And the second point was that he said, <coughs> Everybody looks so depressed here in Wageningen. All the students, they walk with their head bent to the pavement. They, they are not proud on our, on our cluster. And my do one of my daughters is studying in uh, Amsterdam, and she's so proud, and she's so happy. Well, I thought, well, I think she's proud to be in Amsterdam, not to do <laughs> one study. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, OK, uh, and he said, well, we are kind of uh, Silicon Valley for the food. And I thought, well, the food valley, that, that's a nice idea. So I, I took that with me, and I discussed it with other companies. And to my big surprise, people liked the idea. They said, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's nice. Uh, what, what do we do then? I said, I don't know. <laughs> 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 Tell me. <laughs> uh, but there was, a, there was a positive reaction on that idea, and we... Um, we discussed that with, with more and more companies, and it, uh, I think we had maybe 20 or 30 meetings at the end of the day, always uh, made sure there were some alcoholic beverages so they didn't go too, <laughs> too early. Um, but, but we had nice discussions, what, what should we do, what should we not do, and it, it grew. Um, and then we, uh, we, we became a little bit confident, and then one day I, I went to the next village, where there was more the processing industry. Uh, Wageningen is more scientific. And I had the opportunity to talk to the federation, the, well, I it's not important how it's named, but it was, let's say, the captains of the industry of that municipality. They came and discussed items. <laughs> and they were there with their big cigars and their whiskey, and uh, I was very enthusiastically telling about Food Valley innovation, making more, com competitive industry and work with the scientists and and then they said Mr. Kuhne our industry our food industry is dead it nothing will happen here it will go all the companies the food companies they shut down they go to Eastern Europe forget about your idea and please go go back to Wageningen and I think I said I will be back <laughs> but they didn't want to move one and a half year later, we had the conference there in Ede, and we surprised them. But uh, the, the mentality, it's, it's a mentality uh, uh, thing. So, so we continued with, uh, with our, uh, well, with, with the people that, that really thought it was a good idea. And uh, we, had, we had the sessions and at the end of the day. And, and, and one, one uh, one time there was a, a discussion, well, there were always many questions. What does it deliver? What does it bring if we work together and, 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 and do this food valley thing? And one day there was uh, a company, the CEO of a feed company, and he, was, he said, can you explain what I, as a feed company, how I can benefit from such a food valley thing? And there was another guy, Peter Simons, uh, and people, the Dutch, they know him all. And he, he stood and said, listen, there is now a big crisis in, in, this, in the poultry sector because in Belgium there was a dioxin problem. And nobody wanted to eat chicken anymore, chicken meat. So um, he said, you have your company in Wageningen. And you have six and a half thousand scientists, and they are all hobbying, and they, they, they have nothing else to do than to check your meat. So use this for telling everybody that your company is the best food safety company with respect to your feet. Some people were always there in the discussions, and they helped me a lot. It was not only me, it was a number of people that, that made this, this food valley thing. And our province, they, they, they liked the idea very much, and they said, well, we have, uh, we have some money for projects. And the idea was the Innovative Action Program. We have two companies and one research organization, and if they join and make a project, we, we found 50% of the money, let's say 50,000, 100,000 euros. 
well, within a few weeks we had, I think, 10 or 20 proposals, because the, the organizations in Wageningen, uh, that's what we heard from you, from Johanna, they, they talked to, and they came up with ideas very quickly. And, there, and this contributed also to um, uh, that the, the food value concept could mean something in terms of getting money for your innovations. It helped. And there's one, one project I would like to mention to take a little time, but I think it's, it's such a nice project. And I also do that for Mr. Yoon, because he's working for Power Lot. It has to do with, uh, with dairy. Uh, it's a milk and genomics project. Uh, you know, dairy industry is important for us. Uh, and in, for this innovation action program, I met uh, the, the chairman of the dairy association. And he said, well, um, I think there is an, a need to talk to, to the industry. Uh, because those days, that, that in, in Sweden, there was a problem with the milk. It had a specific stench, and it was caused by a defect in one of the bulls in the breeding program. And this defect was, uh, well, that it caused, it caused uh, a, a peptide enzymatic thing, and that caused the smell. And they were, the, the Swedish people were able to track down the problem. Well, as you know, the Netherlands has, uh, we are a, an important exporter of dairy. And this picture shows a little bit in a different way than a table with uh, data. And I would recommend you to go to worldmapper.org. Thanks to Case, because five years ago you, you told me, look at this. It is a computer program, more or less, an internet. And you take in a specific uh, um, subject, and the program will calculate how the world would look, not on basis of land area, but on basis of that criterion. And here you see, we take in dairy exports. And you see that the world looks different. This is New Zealand, and it's bigger than Aus Australia, because New Zealand is producing more milk than Australia. And this is Europe. And this balloon in the middle, that's the Netherlands. So you can see how important dairy <coughs> industry is for us. So <coughs> we invited um, some people from the industry and from academia, from the Wageningen University, to come together and discuss this problem with this Swedish bull. And we, we asked them, uh, do you know this problem? Yes, 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 we know this problem. If this would happen in the Netherlands, would we be able to, to solve this? Would we be able to track this specific defect? No, we, we cannot. And it was the research director of Campina, the research director of Friesland, which were those days the two big dairy companies which a turnover of each four, th four billion euro, big competitors with the professors. And I said, well, I have this innovation action plan and we can apply for and get 100,000 euros of, so, for making the first steps in some plan to, to work on this. Two weeks later, they called me and they said, you throw away this, uh, this thing, because um, we have raised uh, 1.7 million euro to start right now, because you opened our eyes. Well, it was not only me, but also the, the guy from the, the dairy association. We have to start now and get our hands on the tools of genetic information. The, the, the project, it's, it started, I think, 2003. It's still running. It's very successful. I, I think it now has 15, uh, 10 or 15 uh, PhD students. Uh, and it, it looks into the genes and what the relation is between the genetic variation and the quality of milk. 
And they are now in a, in a program to make specific types of milk. So milk with uh, healthy effects, uh, milk that is more dedicated to making cheese, so uh, there's more casein, and using the variation in the population of the cows to make special milks, which will make our industry on the long term more competitive. So that's a nice, uh, 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 I think, a very nice uh, project. Uh, uh, what, what do we learn from that? Uh, you don't always need a subsidy to, to start your innovation process. And competitors, they really can work together if there is a need or if there is an, an opportunity, maybe. But, and big competitors really can work together, especially in the pre-competitive phase. In 2004, we, uh, we established uh, the Food Valley uh, Foundation, with, which had the primary role to, to do more coordination. Uh, the business plan was uh, written by, by three people, one person from the university, one from the municipality, and me from the development agency. And we, um, we were able to raise money. Now I will, because you didn't ask me a question, I will ask a question to you. What do you think? Who contributed to, to this uh, business plan? Who said, yes, I will pay? Was it public, private, public, or private? Who thinks it was public? And uh, please raise your hand. And who thinks it was private? And who thinks it was public-private? Well, the answer is this. We had 450,000. It was the development agency, public. It was a sentence, an organization to support SMEs, from paid by, financed by the Ministry of Economic Affairs. Uh, it was municipalities. And it was also, uh, which later developed into the region Food Valley, an organization. All public. All public. But, of course, there was a good understanding with the private sector. We had so many discussions. So we knew exactly what they wanted. But, okay, what's, what is the Food Valley organization doing? I, I will read, I don't know if you can read in the back, but it had to do with innovation processes, projects, uh, matchmaking, um, startups, uh, direct foreign investment, so acquisition, try to attract companies like every development agency is doing, conferences, uh, a society, so being a member, the 100 companies that Joanna had mentioned, and international branding. Now, so it has to do with marketing, it had to do with innovation, and it had to do with inward investment. And now, uh, what do you think was, in fact, the result? Was it one, was it A, B, or C? Who thinks it was a marketing concept? Huh? Who thinks it was an, an investment, inward investment? Well, that work didn't work out at all. That was a big, a big mistake. Innovation <laughs> program. Oh. I think it was a marketing concept. Yes, there isn't a lot of innovation taking place in this cluster, but the Food Valley concept is, I think, purely a marketing concept. Um, Food Valley conferences contributed a lot to awareness. And there were missions, the last few, to everywhere, to expos. Well, I, I don't go into that. Uh, this is maybe interesting. Uh, this was what we used as uh, a way to promote ourselves. And I think this is not the best way to do it. Because, yes, and especially people from Asia, they very much liked it. We once had a delegation that said, Okay, and then it's the second street, and then we, uh, it's an artist impression. Uh, 
What you, what you don't see is what is under the water. It's the networking, it's the dynamics, it's the, and that's the value, not that, that there is so many buildings on top of each other. It's, and, and that is, we had people from Asia, they were very disappointed because they didn't find this when they came. Uh, some, some Food Valley innovations, well, I don't want to go into them, but, uh, but what Food Valley does is uh, the, the foundation, they use the innovations to show that this is the place to be. So it, it has to do, well, there's the Food Valley Award, for instance, to, well, to make, well, to, to, to get pu publicity about some innovations. This is about a company which uh, uses pulsed electric fields to heat, uh, to, to, uh, to prepare meat, in a f in a, I think, in a few seconds. Uh, there is a company which is a spin-off from a genetic company in seeds, and they focus on, on salmonella. There is a, a company, Microbios, which have developed technology, I think based on an American uh, patent, to produce microphages, so viruses for bacteria. And they, uh, uh, they started in the food and now moving to the health uh, sector, by the way, because there's more to gain, uh, more profitable. Uh, but the, the, the phages, they, uh, their first product was to, to, uh, to kill listeria. Uh, and it's, it's approved in the United States and Canada, this product. Um, and they, they are growing very fast now. Uh, well, I think I've come to, uh, to the end of my presentation. There was, Ted was asking a question. I would like to address that. I go back to here. You, you asked, uh, how does Food Valley, how is it, how is it organized? So that, that was more or less the question, eh, I think. I think you asked that question. Yes, how the different parties work together. That, that was a question, eh? Yeah. Um, it's in fact it was in the in the initial phase it was a virtual organization. So somebody from the development agency and somebody from uh, from a municipality and somebody from uh, Sintens. They just sat together and worked together on this food valley thing. So the, the costs were relatively low, because. Uh, but as well I, as I've said before, they they had the noses pointed in the same direction and worked on the same issues. But initially, it was more or less a virtual organization. When we received money, it became more and more institutionalized. And it became more, let's say, it's a building. And but the, the initial phase was was much more. There was m much more dynamics in it. Uh, then I. How much time do I have? Uh, Fifteen. Oh. oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> Deloitte said we need then more strategy. Well, here is your strategy. We have the triangle, the golden triangle, where uh, government and knowledge institutes and industry works together. That happens in the Netherlands, and I think we do that quite successfully. I think you do that also, and you do that also successfully. Well, what would happen if we would try to integrate that into something that Canadian government and Dutch government would work together that private sector one to one, so on an individual basis would work together, and the academia would work together. I understand that Guelph University and Wageningen University already worked together very successfully for many years. So what would, well, we, how would, yes, St Steve. Well, just to build on your, what you talked about there, one of the problems I could see trying to do this in Ontario is 
Guelph would say we want it. Toronto would say we have to have it because we have 40% of the food cluster and we, we'd end up fighting with each other. So how, you know, I guess it, it's, it will, it, I, I can just see it happening. Who, who says, if it's going to be, if you're going to make something like this happen, is it government that says, you know what, this is going in Guelph, this is the ideal spot for it, and we're going to do it there. Um, who, who is going to drive that decision making, would you suggest, to, uh, so we don't end up with competition of having it here in Mississauga or in Toronto or in Guelph? Uh, I'll answer that question in my presentation. <laughs> I'm kind of that. Thank you, Casey, because I didn't know how to. <laughs> it's a good question. I was just going to propose an answer to the question, and that, that it should be, if it's looked at from a marketing perspective, closer to where the buyers are located, or where the buyers would come. Does that make sense? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can talk about that later. <laughs> you, you, mentioned, you mentioned your major function is marketing, right? One of, the, one of the major drivers. You, you can't market what you don't have. So how did you develop the pieces of what, what your strengths are in order for you to go out and market. Yeah, no, I, I think, well, the question is, um, can you market something that, that's not there? I, I agree, you can't. So there must be something. And I think there is a lot. There's a lot of uh, innovations taking place, but it's the way that you, yes, there must be something. And I think it's, 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 the, it's the network what you are right. trying to market. So, so how long did it take you to convince the players that it was easier to market something together than to go out and market it separately? Or How did you convince them? Yeah. Well, I think I didn't convince them. They convinced themselves. And it took, it took let's say, we started in 2001, and it, it, it grew. So in the beginning, it was a smaller group, and it, it but when it, it starts rolling, uh, it's a, like snowball. Then more people want to be there. And there is some once a guy told me the essential element is companies join it because they are afraid they miss something if they don't. And I think in, in, the, in the questionnaire, it was most, well, I think almost none of the organization, organizations, well, they didn't even know exactly what was the benefit of Food Valley. But they paid contribution in the form of this society. So what is it then? So they didn't want to leave. It didn't bring them directly. But somewhere it has a value. And I think that's, that's the, the marketing thing that you you can say, I belong to. And I think may maybe, Wil Wilbert, you will talk about that too, because I hear you saying that as well. <laughs> Is that an answer to the question? Well, there is an answer. You, you, you may be able to elaborate on it. Um, See, I can see where you've got all the makings of a food cluster. We have all the makings of a food cluster here. Um, academia, land mass, agriculture, processing. We have it all. We just haven't figured out how to put it in a box and put a bow tie on it and <laughs> market it. Like, like you're telling me. Uh, well, Jerry, you have a question? Sure. So, I'm curious, thank you. Um, I'm curious about what, what would the members, how would they articulate the benefits? I mean, when you say marketing, that's a very generic thing to say, but are there individual benefits to the membership, or is it like everybody rises with the tide? So, the market for food and, and uh, the available pot, I guess, has grown in, in the Netherlands because of Food Valley, or 
you know, is it an individual benefit or is it sort of the benefit to the whole? And what is it? How would you articulate what that benefit is? The, the benefit of being a member of Food Valley. Well, they, uh, they have four times a year, they have uh, a meeting with the other members. And they get discount if they go the, to the annual conference. And that's, I think, the benefits. No, but it's, it's, we don't have a meeting with other members. We visit others, each other's companies. That's very yeah, different during, from a meeting. During, during, the during the year, you visit to your Food Valley organizers, visits to member companies which do, who are willing to share their strategy, their ideas. And then about uh, 30, 40 companies turn out. And then you have a, a informal and formal meeting and you visit laboratories or industries. And by that way, you, you learn from each other in an, in a, in a, in an open setting. And that is, I think, an important benefit next to the reduction on the entrance fee for the annual event. It's the networking part. Uh, yeah. Well, it's uh, probably, I will stand up. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, uh, probably it's uh, all also something else. It's all about the brand. Uh, let's be clear. Um, when we met uh, one of our biggest uh, uh, clients, which is Gay Gourmet, you probably know uh, them, uh, uh, which is the airline caterer uh, uh, around the world. They just looked who we, who we were, uh, because we were a tiny little uh, project uh, based in uh, Wageningen University. Never heard of Wageningen University uh, in the first place. After their research, uh, they saw, okay, they are a member of Food Valley, so they, there must be something what they, what they do right. Eh? And, and that's one of the benefits, I believe, by entering uh, a cluster uh, to be uh, a part of a brand. Eh? And you're not alone. And that's one of the things I learned in, uh, in being a member uh, of, the, of, the, of, uh, of the Food Valley Society, is that it's not about your own uh, thing, it's about the whole process and by, common, uh, by making a, a huge uh, difference in all kinds of combinations we are able uh, to work together towards bigger uh, clients uh, because as we are a very little company uh, we, we will never have access alone but now uh, being a part of a, of a, of a cluster be a part of an association and, and it, it, it happened uh, to us and uh, it also happens to other uh, uh, members and that's one of the really individual benefits to be in a cluster so it's not only the network, it's not only the, the, learning, the lessons learned from other uh, companies, but it's also in sharing, yeah? in sharing uh, a community uh, in a way. So that's what I uh, would like to adjust uh, on your uh, story. Um, I understand that Food Valley was kind of born out of this need or fear that the food sector in the Netherlands was dying and uh, the government asked for them to increase the technical content and the food sector seemed like the right place to start. What's our driving fear in Canada or in Ontario? Like, what's the need for innovation? I mean, everybody individually can say that innovation is important, but what's the driving force for Ontario to be more innovative? Let me try to uh, yeah. uh -huh. um, I'll see. What? I'll, I'll let I'll let Doug take it first. Couple couple of thoughts on that. One would be uh, manufactured food exports are declining. For years they were increasing. They become a smaller percentage of uh, what's going on here. Secondly, I think the food industry in general has to compete internationally. We have to find new markets. The U.S. economy is tanked. We've relied on that heavily. I think it's the exact same drivers that they're looking at here. Okay. Just a, a, a same tangent, but I mean, we all know that the, that the food business in Ontario, I think in Canada, is exceptionally fragmented. I work with a bunch of different industries, and food is the most fragmented of, of them all. And I think that um, by necessity in the early days, collaboration wasn't required in also the Ontario Canadian market. It just wasn't lots of growth. Now that we're hitting some barriers with a little less <coughs> global competitiveness, which it wasn't before, now we're seeing collaboration is critical. In, in Europe, in my mind, it was born more within the culture of Europe. Uh, I mean, we want 
you know, a, a food cluster, a food valley here. But I mean, I think any municipality that has a microwave and a kitchen calls himself a food cluster in Canada. <laughs> and it's subsidized to some extent by the, by the, by the government. And that's, that's not good. There's so much money being doled out. We need to focus. And I think it, with, with your stakeholders, you need to understand you know, what their real core competencies are. I think part of it's got to be you know, the, the university side, part of it's got to be the, 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 I'm on the processing side, on the processing side, I mean, you need to combine those, whether, you know, you can't, you can't have the kind of silos and ownership that, because I want it, it's because you deserve it and your core competency says that this project fits with you from a university standpoint. You know, I think that's, I think that's what is really, is really important terms of developing food and we've got a cultural thing and, and collaboration needs real leadership so the leadership on the collaboration I think in Ontario or Canada is even more important perhaps than it is in Europe because of that fragmentation and I don't think that enough leaders have stepped up in the food industry and I think there's too many voices for the food industry in Canada I've been another meeting where we talked about this it needs to be you know, from the processing standpoint, I think a single voice is powerful that can talk about it and move forward. And I've got many thoughts on who that should be. And it isn't me. <laughs> um, sitting back there, but I think that's part of what, what, what there, is a, there is a difference. We absolutely want a food valley, food cluster. We absolutely need it. We, can have, we could have a number of them, but we can't have 60 with microwaves and small little kitchens, we need the government to really focus its funding on where the best bang for the buck of its technology. I mean, the technology business industry has done it at Waterloo with the accelerator center, with University of Waterloo, with all, I mean, why can't we do it? We've got more obstacles on the food side maybe than, than technology does, but it can be done and we should be doing it. Yeah, I think you're right. Thank you, Ted. Um, I'll just add to your question that uh, the industry is far from dying here. It's, uh, it's very, very strong. It's, it's kept growing in the last five years when everybody was uh, going down. It's, uh, it's really uh, competitive, but there is a big risk too because the amount of products that are coming in from other parts of the world is increasing uh, rapidly and uh, our exports are not increasing that rapidly. We're, as uh, Ted mentioned, we're going down south uh, with 85% of our exports. So we need to be looking for other markets and we won't be able to reach those if we're not as competitive as, as we could be. And uh, to um, go back to Ted's comment on the silos, um, everybody seems to um, criticize government for working in silos. I heard it so clearly with those words on Monday at a consultation meeting uh, and there were government people there and, and they said it, government works in silos. But when I commented at my table, that industry does exactly the same thing. Nobody liked the comment, of course. Um, but it's, it's the same thing. Industry does the same thing. Everybody works in their own world, and there is very little collaboration. There, there is very little interaction. And that is exactly what we're trying to, uh, to promote. Sure. And the organizations. I mean, the organizations. We have a wealth of innovation resources across Canada. We have uh, clusters, physical clusters of great you know, but we have a huge spectrum, and I think speaking from a national organization of food tech centers who was tasked with collaborating, we know the challenges across the country. It's huge. So I think one of the one of the starting places might be to establish the virtual cluster because that's what we did. We have a virtual network of resources, but the real collaboration happens in regions and locations, or sometimes on national projects. And we looked at that in Canada the four centers across the country on a specific project. And that starts to build relationships and all of those things. So I really think there, there's a huge opportunity. We've tried to advance this idea with that Canada to get just a little bit of funding to start the virtual cluster, the list of all the players who are out there, how they operate, where they are, and then start to see how the resources fit together. And I think that would be, I think we're really happy to support that. Thank, thank you, Joy. All the yeah. yeah, Joy leads um, uh, Food Tech Canada, with, which is an organization. Of, um, of companies that provide services to the food processing industry across Canada. 
And uh, honestly, I just found out about your organization when I met you, I think, last year. Uh, not everybody knows about them. So what, that is one of the, the problems we have. If, if somebody has a good idea, they don't know where to go for help. Um, so that's, uh, that's very important that you pointed it out. Thank you, Joy. We need to keep going. So um, yeah. thank you very much, Yup. Uh, we appreciate your uh, presentation.